Hi, I'm Ben. Hi, I'm Alex. Uh, today we are going to talk about our top 10 couples games. The games you can play with couples or a significant other, a really close friend, but mostly two people. Yeah. So, so we're going to start off with number 10, so which is... Number 10 is going to be a tile game called Oracle, similar to Scrabble, but with color and shapes. And so you're making rows and columns of all the same color or all the same shape, but you can't have two of the same tile in the row. But, and then you score points based on how long the, the rows are. And so, Again, it's similar to Scrapple. It's just a lot less complex. There's less rules. And I think personally it's a bit more fun to play because of the colors and the shapes instead of just words. Yeah. Um, you can play it with more than two players, yeah, but it, a, you can, four. yeah, I you think could probably, it says four, but you could probably play with five if you wanted to. Yeah, but it's a really good couples game that you, it's a good couples game you could play if you wanted to play with your significant other. Yeah. At number nine, we have Grand Austria Hotel. It is, this game is basically you're running a hotel and you have to get your, Empl your customers in have to serve them their food and get them out and get them to pay you basically you're running a hotel and you get to pick who you're going to have on your staff team who you're gonna what you're gonna serve different things like that it's a bit complex to set up and to play and there are a lot of different roles for the employees but it's once you get the gameplay down it's a lot fun to play especially with two people so I feel like yeah. it would be a bit more complex and slightly yeah. more challenging if it were more than two. You can play with up to, I think, 12? Four. Four people, you yeah. You play up to four, but you don't want to do that because it's just going to make the dra the game drag on too long and you're just going to have to wait around for your turn. It plays best at two. Yeah. It's probably the most complex and hardest game on our list, but it's still a good game. It's worth checking out if you're into like the Euro-style games yeah. or want to give one a try. That's a good one for two players. Number eight is Azul. It's another tile game. You have you put these like colored stained glass pieces and you're trying to build up your board, which is like your wall of different uh, stained glass pieces. And then you score points based on how many you have connected. And you want, we, we play until one row is filled up on one player's board. This is definitely a good strategy game for you to have and I feel like it's very it's a bit more challenging to the mind so if you if you are a if you and your significant other are more interested or in like strategy games more then this would definitely be one that I recommend for you to play together. Super fun to play too especially if you're competitive like me. <laughs> it's number eight Azul. And number seven, one of my favorites, Wingspan. It was, it's basically a game about birds and you're, you have, uh, you're basically collecting birds. You're, and it's your aviary. Yeah. <laughs> you're collecting birds and you're based off of different, their species, how many eggs do you collect and um, so on and so forth. Um, yeah. It, it plays well a solo and it plays as well at three, four, and five players, but at two players this game works really well. Especially if you want um, two players, with two players it drags on a bit, but if you're into the more, if you're more with like more me, two players, yeah. Yeah, with two, if it's like two players it drags on a bit, but if you're into the um, long games and you like long it's not drawn bad, out games, it's really good. Um, and it's perfect. I, me, I like long games that are drawn out more. So I feel like you get to spend more time with your friend or your significant other, whoever's in your life. So this is yeah. perfect for that. That's why I like it. Plus birds are cute. <laughs> yeah, it's very well done and the components are really nice on it. And there are also like different updates and uh, different version, well, different There's upgrades expansions. and expansions that you, you can, can get for it. Components, but you don't need them. Yeah, you can you like yeah, like he said, you can get the upgraded components, but you don't really need them. But if you want them, you can get them, and they're really cute. So.
That's number seven. Number six is a, a abstract strategy game called Santorini. And so in Santorini, you are basically building up Santorini, the, the city of Santorini, like one block at a time, and you're trying to get your your character to the highest level. There, you start at the on the floor, and then you're building up and higher and higher until you get to the third level. And so on your turn, it's very simple. You simply move your your character one space, and then you build up one of your adjacent areas one one level higher. And so you can block your opponent from, you, you can also place domes on your opponents to block them from reaching the top. It's a very, it's a very, uh, like I, w me personally, I wouldn't, I like the game. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites, but I like the game more. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it more than you. He does. He likes it more than I do. But it's a. Pr I have to admit, the artwork is very pretty. It's beautiful. The artwork's beautiful. Yeah, this one is much better than the, the first printing. I don't know if you've seen the first printing. I think you showed me it's, the first printing. It's it was horrible. It's ugly, yeah. So, yeah, so definitely get the, the Roxley version. It's, just, it's the version that's still available. So, yeah. It's yeah. very fun to play if you're like into it's like a very fun like you can be sly and kind of sneaky and tricky with it so I like it I like that aspect of it so it's very fun yeah it's a good replacement for like the chess or or go yeah. number five we have a cute little card game the fox in the forest first let's just look at this this is just so cute it's adorable yeah it's well drawn and painted the cards yeah it's basically just like a little card game you can play um it's a quick play so if you're like you know bored or you're waiting for something and you're trying to kill time you can play this with your significant other it's pretty it's pretty short game not really drawn out or anything depending on how you play but either whether whether it's drawn out or not it's still a pretty quick game to play and it's just a basic simple card game so. it's a trick-taking game where you, one player leads that the trick and then the other person has to play a card from their hand that matches that suit if they can and if they can't then they they can play any card they want and then you have to match either the trump suit or the the lead suit and then you whoever has a higher number from the if from the lead suit or the or the trump suit will win that trick and then you have to win a certain number of tricks but you don't want to be greedy and win too many tricks so that's one thing i like about this one is you really have to think about how many you actually win and sometimes you have to let your opponent win some tricks because you don't want to be too greedy or else you'll get no points for that round right number four is another is a two-player only game as well, and that is Patchwork by Uwe Rosenberg. It is a quilt building game where you're managing resources, which are buttons in this case. You use your buttons to purchase a different pieces to fill up your board. And then you, you and if you have the most filled up board when the game is over, you also have to manage time because once your mover goes around the, finishes moving around the board, you can't take any more turns. So you're not only managing your buttons, which is currency, but also time, which is also a currency in this game, it's sort of. It's a bit, like, it sounds a bit complicated. It's, it's It sounds really a bit complex, but trust me, it's super easy to learn. Yeah. Um, and once you get the hang of it, it becomes, it turns into a pretty fun game. I know when I first played the game, I hated it because I did not get it at all. I didn't understand the concept that, that that time is money. Yeah, that concept kind of upset me, so I was like, I hated the game, but I played it a bit more, and then I was like, okay, I kind of like this game, I understand it a bit more, so yeah. once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy to, it's pretty easy and fun to learn, but it's super, super, it's a really good couples game. Yeah, and it plays in like 20 minutes, so it's, it's good to just break out when you have 20 minutes to kill. Number three, we have Chronicles of Crime. Okay. Now, Chronicles of Crime, it's like uh, more in like basically you're solving a crime, whatever crime 
there's um, different kinds of crimes. Like you have murders, you have missing people, you have thefts, you know, and there's different time periods in which you can play them in. And it's more so of a um, virtual game that you can play. You need an app. You would need an app to play this game as well. So if you are interested in playing this game, I would definitely recommend getting the app. Um, you can't really play it without it. Um, it's a bit more um, complex to set up, but once it's set up, it's basically most of the complexity is in the setup. Other than that, once you play through it, it's pretty, pr runs through pretty smoothly and it's super fun. It's a fun interactive game to play if you're with your husband or your boyfriend, girlfriend, your friend. Um, you can play with up to four people, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It works better when it's just you and your than another person. Yeah, it works better at one or two, but yeah, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it because then you just have people fighting over the phone and <laughs> trying to to get have their way, and it doesn't work out at all. And it turns into a big brawl, which I mean, depending on how you what what you like, it could be fun. All right, number two is another tile game. We had lots of tile games on this list, but this one's my favorite, and that is Calico. It is a quilt, another quilt game, kind of like patchwork, except for you have like these hexagonal tiles and they have different patterns on them and colors, and you're just trying to, to connect enough of the same pattern or of this, the, or, or color to get a button or to attract a cat to come lay on your, uh, on your quilt and then you score points and bo there's bonus points for having them around these different uh, goal markers in the game but it works well and you can get pretty feisty when uh, when fighting for tiles people people's feelings can get hurt when you take <laughs> the tile that you that <laughs> That you wanted that you're planning to take you you have your heart set on taking a tile and the other person just takes it from you and, and, and it puts it entire in, plan and puts it in your uh, in, in their quilt and then you're forced to take another tile that doesn't work very well and it kind of ruins your plans for uh, for the goals you're trying to accomplish but that's the fun in the game yeah <laughs> that's the fun in the game also within the game there are different patterns um, that most there there's uh, different patterns that certain cats will like so you get points for um, a certain pattern or a certain number of a certain pattern tile within the within your quilt that a cat might like and you will receive a cat a little tiny cat tile and that will Those are cute. gear towards points which is adorable I think I'm still waiting so. for more cats though yeah. <laughs> But it's a really fun game. Um, I definitely recommend couples uh, play it. It's super fun. And just if you're cat lovers, like, come on, this yeah. is adorable. It's also something you can get the, the kids into, too. Yeah. If you so it's a good family game. game as well. Yes. Number two. And our number one couples game is Codenames Duet. It is a two-player game, and basically you're a spy, and you're trying to guess the words, you're trying to guess the words, and the words act as your contact. So you're trying to guess the correct words of each person, and you give clues. I think it's one or one word, one clue. word clues. Um, and so you give one word and then a number, um, and that will correspond to the number of words on the placed on the table and you have to associated guess associated with that word that you're with that clue you're given yeah so it's a bit of a word it's a word association game as well so it's it's, it's a, a bit, word game yeah and it allows you to kind of like allows you to kind of see take a, a small little look inside your partner's mind and so yeah. super fun it's very funny or at least to me it is so <laughs> yeah if you don't know someone very well and you try and play it with them they can get upset yeah you know. depending on how it goes it could be they could either get upset or find it funny so and you get to learn a little bit more so it's super fun if you're starting out as a couple and you're trying to learn a little bit more and it helps you learn a little bit more about your significant other or your friends so very very fun game to play yeah and that's cool. and it's a pretty quick game to play too yeah so. and that's our number one pick 
So let us know down in the comments if you have any fun couples games that you like to play with your significant other or if you've never heard of these games and you would like to play some play it so yeah. let us know down in the comments below yeah and don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel thank you for watching and have a great day Bye. Bye. <laughs>